Hi folks, welcome to this lesson on derivatives of trig functions. I'm not going to do any proofs in here, um, but I'll try and make a, some sort of compendium of proofs somewhere along the lines here. The derivative of sine x is cos x. If we just took a really, really quick gander at the derivative of sine x, like here's sine x. It starts with a positive slope. Over here it has a zero slope at its max, then a negative slope, then a zero slope. You can tell that its derivative looks something like a cosine graph if we were to sketch it. Um, so these derivatives have some sort of graphical way of confirming them or assuming they're about the right shape. But these are the true derivatives here. So the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And I like to do a little wheel of trig. So sine differentiates to cosine. Cosine differentiates to negative sine. Negative sine differentiates to negative cosine, and then back again. And if we move clockwise in this direction, we'll be differentiating. These things are in your formula booklet, but eventually we'll be anti-differentiating these, and it's easy to get them mixed up. If we have the wheel of trig, then differentiating is clockwise, anti-differentiating is counterclockwise. The derivative of tan x turns out to be 1 over cos squared x, um, and that's sometimes written as secant squared x, okay, where there are basically three dark trig ratios. Secant x is defined as 1 over cos x, just spares you some from some fractions. And just sort of for your knowledge, cosecant is 1 over sine x, and cotangent is 1 over tan x, not surprisingly. Or it can also be thought of as cos over sine. But we're going to look at it as 1 over cos squared x in this course because we haven't dealt with the reciprocal or dark trig ratios. As always, we've got to look for the chain rule. So, I mean, if you have y equals sine of a glob, well, then its derivative will become cosine of that glob times the derivative of the glob. Remember, we're not saying sine times x. It's sine of x here. Let's try a few. So let's say that we had y equals tan 3x. Okay. We know that tan x, just from above, goes to 1 over cos squared x. So the question is, what does tan glob become? Well, it becomes 1 over cos squared of the glob times the derivative. Okay, That's the chain rule always at play. Let's figure out what those things are. So cos squared of 3x, okay, not times 3x, but of 3x, times the derivative of 3x, that's 3. Okay. This is not legal. You can't divide those out. The 3x that is in the brackets, that's part of the angle. It is sacred. It is untouchable. All we can do here is say that 3 kind of acts as a coefficient derivative of the glob over cos squared of 3x. Okay, don't get into any shenanigans with uh, fake cancellation in trig. My favorite example of shenanigans in trig uh, division is or fake cancellation, something like this, where people will do this, sine x over n equals 6, because, you know, those just cancel out. That's ridiculous. So the next one, we have sine of a glob. Okay, then that glob is root x. And you might want to think of this as the sine of x to the half. Or maybe you have a trick for finding the derivative of root x. It's always 1 over 2 root x. Um, but you can also just use this technique of going to exponential form. So sine of a glob is going to become... Derivative of sine, let's check it out up here. Derivative of sine is cosine, or from the wheel of trig right here. Sine goes to cosine. So that's going to give us cosine of the glob times the derivative of the glob. So that's going to be cosine of x to the half times 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And then we could write this in a different order if we really wanted to. Again, we don't multiply by the angle. This one here is the angle. The other stuff kind of acts as coefficients. 
Or if you wanted to put this back in radical form, that would be cos of root x lives on top, that 2 lives on the bottom, and x to the negative a half is a root x that lives on the bottom. So in that one, the outer shell was sine. So we thought of it as sine of a glob. In this next one, it's a little sneakier. It's really, on its outermost shell, it's a square root. So this counts as square root of a glob. Or I could think of this as sine x to the power of a half, okay? or glob to the half. So even though they look similar, what the exterior function is, or piece of the function is, changes here. So if we have glob to the half, well, its derivative is going to be 1 half glob to the power of negative 1 half times the derivative of that glob. Okay, let's put in those values. So 1 half the glob was sine x. And the derivative of the glob Derivative of sine x is cos x, again, from wheel of trig up front. So we'd have 1 half, uh, maybe I'll put the cos x out front. Doesn't really matter the order. Cos x, sine x to the negative 1 half. Okay. Or cos x over 2 root sine x. Slightly different result, right? Because of what's on the exterior, what's on the interior. Let's try another one here. y equals sine squared x. This is an important one. So sine squared just means sine of x all squared. Okay, And in other words, you have a glob squared. So the exterior thing is that power of 2. Differentiate, you get 2 glob to the power of 1 times the derivative of the glob. That becomes sine x. It'll be to the power of 1. There's the glob again. Times the derivative of the glob. The derivative of the glob is cos x. So we get 2 sine x cos x. And you might recognize that expression from uh, double angle formulas. There's an alternate way to simplify it. 2 sine x cos x is the same as sine 2x. You can find that in your formula booklet from double angle formulas. If it doesn't ask you for this specifically, then you don't have to do it. You can imagine if you had to differentiate again, it would be annoying from that form 2 sine x cos x because you'd have a product there. It would be easier to do from this other form. And that's the case with trig all the time. There's often a lot of different ways that you can write this. So here's another one, e to the x times sine x over 2. Although it looks really pretty to have x over 2, I always like to think of this as a coefficient of a half. So when I'm thinking about this, this is a product. It's e to the x times sine of a half x. So u would be e to the x, u prime, derivative of e to the x is e to the x. v would be sine of a half x, or x over 2. V prime, that's sine of a glob. So the derivative of sine of a glob is going to be cosine of that same glob times the derivative of the glob. Or V prime is a half cos of a half x. After that, it's just plug and chug in your product rule. So U prime V plus UV prime. Okay, so U prime V plus u, which happens to be the same thing, v prime, which is a half cos of a half x, or x over 2 if you prefer. If you want to take out a common factor, that's lovely. There's a common factor of e to the x. It would leave you with sine of a half x plus a half cos of a half x. Do you need to take out the e to the x? No. You should definitely make sure, though, that that half in this term right over here, it goes to the front of the term because numerical coefficients should go out front. Okay. And do not multiply this half by this half. One of them is like a coefficient. If you were to graph it, the half out front affects the amplitude. 
the half inside that affects the period. So let's actually find a slope here. Find the gradient of the tangent to cos cubed where x is 2 pi over 3. Don't worry about subbing in the number yet. So I need to think of this. Cos cubed means cos xl cubed or a glob cubed. So if I want to differentiate, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 3 glob squared times the derivative of the glob. I'm going to write my little wheel of trig off to the side here. Wheel of trig sine goes to cosine. Cosine goes to negative sine. Negative sine goes to negative cosine. And round and round in the circle game, Jody Mitchell style. So that would give us cos x all squared here. The glob is cos x. And the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. Let's make this look a little prettier. That would be negative 3. It's OK to leave this as cos x all squared times sine x. You could simplify how you want. You could call it cos squared of x. Um, you could look for some way to use some identity. But in the end, what we want is a number for our answer. So we want to sub in at 2 pi over 3. Okay. Let me think about that. 2 pi over 3 is 120 degrees. It's right here. Okay. We're going to need to find some values. Maybe I'll just write what's going to happen when we sub in. You're going to have the cosine of 2 pi over 3 all squared times the sine of 2 pi over 3. And you may or may not remember how to find some of these values. The way to do it is to draw the original angle and think about its reference angle. So 2 pi over 3, it's OK to think of that as 120 degrees. Its reference angle would be pi over 3, or 60 degrees. And I've been advocating that you use the quarter circle, but it doesn't really matter to me which one you use. Okay. But at 60 degrees, you would have the point 1 half root 3 over 2. What does that mean for 2 pi over 3? Well, if we're in the second quadrant, or at 120 degrees, cosine of 2 pi over 3, something weird just happened here, Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is going to come from this x value. But in the second quadrant over here, it's going to be negative. In fact, if I wrote these coordinates for this point here, the x value is going to be negative. So negative a half squared times the sine of 2 pi over 3. That comes from the y value. And it's still going to be positive in the second quadrant. So it would be root 3 over 2. So all of our tricky stuff is coming home to roost here. Okay, negative a half. Uh, squared is a quarter times root 3 over 2. So as a precise value, we'd have negative 3 root 3 over 8, I hope. A lot of places to go wrong there. So let's go to the GDC and just double check that that makes sense. So first of all, I know that my answer on the GDC is going to be a decimal. So I might as well figure out the decimal version of what I just found exactly. Point negative six four nine five, so point negative six five zero to three six figs, and that's what I'm wondering if I'm going to get on the graph if I graph this. Okay, so the graph is cos of x close closed, all cubed, and I can go to normal window settings. It's it's kind of strange there. We are looking for the slope at two pi over three. So two pi over three. Let's see. Um, 2 pi over 3 is going to be around 2-ish. It does look like it's going to be maybe negative. But I have to press second trace and go down to find the slope here. And then I'm going to tell it 2 pi divided by 3 is my x value and hit enter. And you can see, or maybe you can't, there's a little blue thing, the second one uh, from the top says derivative is negative 0.6495. So we did this correctly. From the old textbook, 
There's some practice questions on page 380. That's the Hayes Mathematics book, uh, third edition. I hope you found this helpful. Good luck with the material, folks, and take care.